Tableau 9, Part 3. Independence, the warp and the woof of the fabric of chance. I am being a little whimsical here, indulging in a metaphor from fabrics and textiles. The warp and the woof refers to the threads that run across a fabric. And in a very real sense, the idea of independence is a skein or a thread that runs through the entire theory of chance. Understanding independence properly allows us, opens a door into manifold applications and a richer understanding of the theory. So, thus far we've built up a formal idea of what independence means, and we've seen how independence can arise in situations where there are repeated independent trials. In this lecture, we will move on and look at three settings, rich, interesting, applicable widely, and where independence arises, sometimes subtly, sometimes overtly. And we shall see that the consequences are profound and significant in their own right. So, without further ado, let's begin with our first application. An application in gambling, the casino game of craps. Now, this is an old friend. We've seen the game of craps introduced in Tableau 3, Part 3, and so let us refresh our memory as to the structure of this game. Now, admittedly, this is a dice game where one repeatedly throws a pair of dice. But the rules are arcane, peculiar, singular. The way this game functions is one throws a pair of dice, looks at the face values and sums them. If the sum of the face values is a 2 or a 3 or a 12, then you lose immediately. If the sum of the face values happens to be 7 or 11, then you win immediately. It gets interesting if the sum of face values is one of the remaining numbers, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10. In that case, the game progresses by repeatedly throwing this pair of dice and summing the face values, and stopping at the first moment when either the first throw's number is replicated or a 7 is thrown. If you're lucky enough to replicate what you first threw, you win. If you have the misfortune of throwing a 7, you lose. Strange, peculiar. Now, we saw by an elementary analysis that the chances of winning on the first throw, that is to say, the chance of throwing a 7 or an 11, is twice that of losing on the first throw, that is to say, throwing a 2 or a 3 or a 12. Does that suggest that the introvert gambler is justified in going forward and playing this game? Well, not so hasty. We should do an analysis and understand what happens in the remaining cases. So, let us go back and put together a probability space for this problem. The fundamental question, of course, is what is the probability that a gambler will win in a game of craps? The reader, who does not recall how we put together the probability space, might want to take a break and go back to Tableau 3, Part 3, and reconstruct the sample space for this experiment. But, to summarize, here are the salient points. For each throw of the pair of dice, we're going to sum the face values, and the residual experiment then can be thought of as having an alphabet of the numbers 2 through 12. And we've seen that the appropriate probability measure, the atomic measure attached to each of these possibilities, is 1 in 36 for 2, 2 in 36 for 3, 3 in 36 for 4, and so on with 6 in 36 for 7. And the probability is decreasing apace, 5 in 36, 4 in 36, and back down to 1 in 36 for 12. Now, what is the sample space for this conjoint experiment? And clearly here we have a setting where we have repeated independent trials. Each throw is independent of the previous throw with a termination condition. 
These are the peculiar rules of the game. So, let's start with a sample space. It is clear that one way of engendering a sample point is to throw one of the numbers 2, 3, 12 or 7, 11. So the single letters 2, 3, 12, 7 or 11 constitute bona fide sample points of the experiment. But if one throws 4, 5, 6, 8, 9 or 10, then the experiment continues and we get a succession, a sequence of numbers. Let's say the game has continued in this latter case through n trials. We then obtain a succession, a sequence of numbers, k1, k2, k3, through k sub n, where n is 2 or larger, and k1 is one of the numbers 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10, and the remaining numbers are specified as follows. The final number, kn, has to be either the starting number k1 or 7. In the former case, you win. In the latter case, you will lose. The numbers which are sandwiched in between these bookend numbers k1 and kn, the numbers k2 through kn minus 1, have all to be any of the numbers excepting the original number k1 or 7. All such sequences constitute valid bona fide sample points of experiment. And the sample space, then, is a collection of those single numbers and all such valid sequences. Excellent. Now we understand what this sample space is, what the probability game is. What are the events of interest to us? Well, naturally enough, the primary event of interest to us is that we win. Let's call this event W. W, then, is a subset of the sample points. What are the sample points that trigger W? What are the sample points that are favorable for W? Well, W certainly includes the single letters 7 and 11. If you throw 7 or 11 on the first trial, you win. W also includes all sequences K1 through Kn, where K1 is one of the six numbers, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10. Kn is the same as K1, and the numbers k2 through kn minus 1 in between can be neither k1 nor 7. All such subsequences will then trigger the event that you win, the event w. Of course, this is a subset of the sample space. The probability measure is a natural probability measure obtained as a product measure. We simply multiply atomic probabilities. Now, before we get any further, we should pause to examine the problem to understand what it is made up of. It is never wise to jump into an analysis without first understanding what the structure of the problem is. Here we have a problem with many possible steps. The steps are guided by the first step. This brings to mind a very simple partition that we've encountered before. This is the principle of Lotso. A long journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. We've seen an evocation of this principle earlier when we talked about the ballot problem. We conditioned, we partitioned the space by looking at what happened in the last step of the count. Now here is a problem where the first step is peculiarly interesting and informative. Accordingly, let's start with our first guiding principle of additivity, a partition of the space based upon the very first step in the sequence. Write F2 for the event that the first throw results in a 2. F3 for the event that the first throw results in a 3. And so on, Fk representing the event that the first throw results in a number k, k running between 2 and 12. It is clear that the first throw has to result in some number from 2 through 12, it's also clear that you can't have two possible numbers from the first row. The events Fk, the events F2 through F12 partition the sample space. It's a beautiful, elegant, and simple understanding of how this game is proceeding. Ah, but there's one more partition which is baked into the cake, as it were. Let's pause and think about what 
is the essential nature of the sample point. True, the sample points are determined by what happened first, but there's something else at play here. The sample points themselves could constitute sequences of trials terminating at some specific kind of trial. The moment one has a sequence, that suggests that winning or losing can be broken down into winning or losing after a certain number of steps. So suppose we win. Well, we could win on the first trial, or the second, or the third, and so on. Let us now take stock of this understanding and create a little more notation. In a natural notation, let us write W with a subscript N to connote the event that you win at the nth trial. N, of course, can run through the integers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth. If you win at all, you're going to have to win at some trial. And so the events W sub N, W1, W2, W3, and so forth, partition the event W into disjoint or mutually exclusive pieces. Now, these two realizations, coupled with an underlying appeal to independence, to the product measure, will wrap everything up beautifully and elegantly.